baby have an eye on your iPhone and his hands on it anytime it's within reach? Does he go all trance-like whenever he crawls past the TV, no matter what's on? Of course he does. He's drawn to bright, shiny objects of all kinds, especially ones that make noise, light up, and move, and particularly ones that do all that and more in response to the touch of his chubby little fingers. There's no doubt that electronic media can be magical to a baby or toddler, or that the mesmerizing spell it casts on little ones can buy parents a sanity-saving spell of peace, quiet, and cooperation when they need it most. Like in a restaurant, in the car, in the waiting room, at the doctor's office, when dinner needs to be made or laundry needs to get done, or when an end-of-the-day meltdown is anticipated, or is already in full progress and nobody has what it takes to deal. It's a sure-fire soother. Power on a screen, watch the crankies switch off in a flash. But do babies and screens mix? According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, no screen time is a good time for little ones under the age of 18 months. That applies to screens of all sizes and content of all varieties, including programs and apps marketed for tots. Here's why. While images flashing across a screen will definitely attract your baby's attention, research shows that they can't be processed by her brain the way that images in real life, or even those in a book, can be. They're basically a sensory blur, a jumble of sights and sounds that doesn't boost brain power and actually may slow language development down. That's because screen time usually takes the place of time spent interacting with parents, the way babies learn language best. Tapping on a screen or sitting in front of one passively also keeps your little one from tapping into his natural curiosity, limiting his opportunities and his drive to explore and discover the world and the living room around him, to touch, shake, and manipulate things, and yes, throw them, to figure out how things work, how they fit in space, how they move in 3D, none of which happens with random swiping. Something else baby can't learn from a screen? Those all-important social skills, the ones she hones in play with you and others. Human interface? There's no app for that. The TV's on and nobody's watching? Research shows it's still competing for a baby's still limited focus. For now, try to keep your baby low tech, powered by that busy little body and that active little mind, at least as much as possible. Will that always be possible? Probably not. When you do turn to screen time, as the vast majority of parents do, try to limit it to no more than five minutes at a time, 10 tops. And when you can, again, not always possible, especially if you're switching on the screen to buy yourself a few minutes of baby minding time, watch along with your baby, offering up interaction that can help him understand and even benefit from what he's seeing and hearing. Try to keep in mind also that baby's not the only one who can be distracted by a phone or a TV. Moms and dads can be too, and too much time spent on social media can cut into time spent socializing with your little one. If you're finding your screens are vying with your baby for attention, consider powering off while you play together. The bottom line, when it comes to screens and babies, less is more. And when it comes to helping your baby's brain grow, nobody does it better than you do. Here's to your low-tech tot.